Hello, welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally like to talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about quite an innovative game. We're going to be talking about the adventures of Robin Hood. And in this game, you'll be traversing Sherwood Forest. You'll be flipping tiles over, trying to solve the mystery of whatever the hell is going on in this game. So in this video, we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules. We can't really give you a lot of info because there's going to be spoilers. So we'll try and keep that to a minimum, but we'll tell you what we do like, what we don't like, and then we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not the adventures of Robin Hood is worth your time and bother today and in the future. So remember, if you know it, and please consider subscribing to this channel. Leave a comment in that section down below. Hit the like button and all that bullshit. And we'll see you after this. Bollocks. So the Adventures of Robin Hood. How'd you play this game? So the Adventures of Robin Hood is a story telling game that is based around a board and a hardback book which basically tells you the story right you'll see that the tiles on the board have got numbers on them and these numbers are used as a method to interact with the book which tells you the story right each player is going to take the role of one of the characters from the Robin Hood legends you've got Robin Hood himself you've got Maid Marian you've got Will Scarlet and then you've got little John right who allegedly isn't that little might be the size of his knob. So you'll see that each one of these pieces is a different size. You've got the standing characters token, and then you've got varying sizes of character that indicate how far they can move. First thing to do is you open up the book and it will tell you how to set up the game board, right? I'm not gonna go into any spoilers about this, but the book will tell you to place your figures on a certain space on the board, and you'll then be asked to move them right you'll place one of your figures next to your standard figure and then you'll place another figure and another figure until you decide not to place them if you don't place your long figure then you'll get to place a white cube in the bag and this represents enhanced strength because you'll be drawing cubes out of the bag to fight the guards and the noblemen right you cannot go through trees objects buildings and all that sort of stuff but you can stop in the shadows in the shade of the trees in the castle right and if you do this then you ain't going to get a battering from the guards because they won't be able to see you. You'll see at the bottom of the board also that you've got a little bard token and the book will tell you to place this on the banner of hope, I think it's called. One of you is going to reach into the bag and you'll pull out a disc, right? The disc that you pull out may be related to the colour of the character that you are playing. Like Robin Hood is going to be associated with the green discs and this will indicate to you that you can move that character you'll move first unless you're on a guard in which case you can't move and you'll just have to take the next action you can do which is the defeat action you reach into the bag and you'll pull out a cube if it's white then you win the battle and you'll get the reward that's under the guard or the nobleman and if you pull out a purple cube you'll pull out up to three purple cubes if you don't pull out a white cube you just pull out purple cubes and you will lose and nothing else happens right so the red disc is when bad stuff happens the book will tell you exactly what happens but generally you're going to lose hope and the hourglasses that are on the bad end tile will be removed and when all of the hourglass tokens are removed from the bad end you'll lose the game right so you'll also be able to examine a tile that has a question mark on it if you're standing on that space you'll look at the number on the tile and then you'll go to the reference in the book and it will tell you what happens there's also other events that can happen dependent on what color you pull out the bag i'm not going to do any spoilers for you about that and basically once you have fulfilled the requirements of the story in the book then you will win that chapter and you can either move on to a new one or if you've completed all of the chapters in the book then you'll win the game of robin hood so what do we like about robin hood so the first thing that we really like about this game is the innovative nature of a game right there's something quite unique about having a book that you can read from and also flipping the tiles on the game board right because this gives you hidden information you don't know what is underneath the tiles right there might be some rewards that you might pick up yeah and and you don't necessarily have to follow the story you can interact with these things anytime you like and the book will take that into account also the book seemingly knows which adventure you are playing right so for each adventure things on the board will act differently dependent on what you're doing so the fact that you're flipping the tiles and the book can change the way that the tiles interact with you it's quite good isn't it so the second thing that we like about this is it's interesting to see what happens next if you think about games in a sort of similar vein to this like maybe detective portal games didn't really grab 
our attention. It was more like a mechanical type of thing. And this is a more fluid experience, right? You'll be going from location to location, reading a few entries from the book. It will sort of push the narrative forward without you getting bogged down in all these different rules and different intricacies. Right? So the game stays very simple. You just got the board and a book and your pieces on a board, right? So that's pretty good. So the third thing that we like about well, Robin Hood, I was going to Robinson Crusoe. So the third thing that we like about Robin Hood is that the movement rules work really well, yeah? You're going to have your standard figure where you last move to. You're going to be placing these medium and long tokens out, and then you'll move to the place where you end, right? So that's really, really easy. There's no squares on the board, so you're not going to be rolling and moving or counting where you're going. It's up to you to move how far you want, right? And if you don't use your long figure, you're going to be chucking a white cube in the bag. So that's going to have to happen at some point if you're going to want to kick the guards' asses. And you're going to have to do that to increase the hope because every time that red disc comes out, you're going to get screwed, right? You're going to have to have the odd scrap here and there. So yeah, the movement rules work really well. So what don't we like about Robin Hood? So the first thing that we don't like about Robin Hood is the component quality isn't that great yeah our copy had some missing pieces so we had to get in touch with cosmos and get these sorted out still hasn't arrived so we're sort of having to make do without some of the pieces right so that's bad the second crap thing about this is that where you're flipping the tiles constantly especially the guards and the nobleman tiles the edges of the tiles are going to get ripped to shreds right we've we've gone through this game and already it's looking like this has been retrieved from a nuclear epicenter right this multi-layer cardboard just doesn't work for this game because you're going to be digging your fingernails into this and pulling it out and if you've got four people playing this some people that don't own the game aren't going to give two shits about where they tear this game up yeah so with repeated plays this game just falls apart it's like it's made out of porridge yeah so cosmos next time you do a game like this Think about what you're doing. Think about how this game is going to be played here. Yeah? And just don't use multi-layered, really soft cardboard when you're going to be digging your fingernails into it, innit? You stupid or something. So the second thing that we don't like about Robin Hood is the writing is really shit, yeah? The story seems like it was written by an amateur author, yeah? If you're going to be creating a story-driven game, get in a professional writer, yeah? Because this feels like it was written by a five-year-old, yeah? A lot of the entries in the book are just maybe one paragraph and then there's a really badly drawn illustration to fill up space yeah so it doesn't ever feel like you're entering into a detailed world and some of the entries seem rushed and just not that great you know so the writing is pretty shit so the next thing that we don't like about robin hood is at the end of the day it's just a frustrating experience the random disc draw can kill the game if that red disc comes out at the wrong time before you've done anything then you're stuffed there's nothing you can do about it you're going to end up in an open clearing with a guard you're going to have to fight them and there may not be any white cubes in the bag for whatever reason because you just couldn't afford to keep back the long token right when you get further into this game there's going to be more stuff thrown into the bag that's going to be detrimental i just found this game to be really really frustrating if you add to that some of the quests that you go on some of the adventures ask you to think about the best route forward right and there just doesn't seem to be any kind of logic to this in one adventure you're asked to find an escape route right think about the best place you can go to to escape right and that adventure makes no sense whatsoever it's like you go to this location and that location will tell you to go somewhere else we were left thinking like why would that person send us over there there's no logic to it there's no puzzle there's nothing to work out just go into locations reading an entry from the book and that will send you somewhere else right so there's no working out there's no logic to the game and couple that with the random disc draw and i've just found myself tearing my fucking hair out so the final things that we don't like we have to squeeze these in there because it is a bit of a pain in the ass right but yeah the final things that we don't like is that the setup is a pain in the ass whenever you set up an adventure you're gonna have to flip all the tiles back over and then the book will tell you to set the game up turn certain tiles over and it's just it just it's like a barrier to playing the game and there's no real way around this with a game of this nature right so just bear that in mind that the setup sort of removes you from the experience yeah and the final thing that we don't like about it is there's no replayability once you've gone through the game that is the end of that and you're left with something that you really can't play anymore it's not even like playing one of these legacy games like risk legacy where you've got a game of risk that you can play if that's what you really want to do right this is a throwaway game you can play once 
maybe twice if you fail some of the missions right but there's no replayability and that's really really disappointing considering the price of this game is like about 35 to 40 quid yeah so pain in the bum so to summarize is robin hood worth your time and bother today and in the future so we're gonna say probably not it's a highly original but deeply flawed storytelling game that is more frustrating than enjoyable you know the novel mechanics in this the tile flipping and reading from a book are overshadowed by some poor production choices like the poor quality tiles the missing pieces obviously some really really wonky writing and the random disc draw and the sort of seemingly random events that happen yeah in my opinion it's better to read one of these fighting fantasy choose your own adventure books because you get the same sort of experience from them without the pain in the arse setup and they're generally more descriptive and more character driven because in this there's nothing to differentiate between robin hood maid marion and the other two nuggets that are in this but in the fighting fantasy choose your own adventure game books you're drawn into this world you are actually in the game they're better written right so it's easier to play one of them than it is to spend 30 40 quid on this and find yourself tearing out what little air you got left right so we can't recommend robin hood go out and buy one of the many many fighting fantasy game books out there and uh, yeah there you go that's the adventures of robin hood remember if you're new here please consider subscribing to this channel if you ain't already hit the like button leave a comment all that crap and we'll see you next time